Okay, so let's let's see what this what this Richardson extrapolation does. Now for the trapezoidal rule, and you can do the same thing with other ones, but let's just take trapezoidal rule because given a choice of two data points or four data points, we'll use a trapezoidal over rectangular. So why not use trapezoidal? So we know that the truncation error, truncation, it's called Richardson, Richardson extrapolation. Truncation T is of the order of delta x cube. This is something which came from the previous one. So trapezoidal delta x cube. Okay, so the total error is different from the truncation error. Truncation error is the error in in uh, in evaluating one term. The total error is when you sum this across the entire integration. That is when you do this integration over dx uh, of the error. You take the truncation. And then you do dx over the entire range, and that gives you the total error. So that's the error in your. Oh, you just have to keep adding. Now, the reason why they're different is because of the integral. So, if the truncation error is of the order of delta x cube, then this dx, uh, since this integral is nothing but a summation, right? We can write this as. This is, everything is approximate, it's, it's proportional to n times delta x cube, where n is the number of intervals, but n is b, let's put a and b here, b minus a divided by delta x, right? Delta x cube. That's the definition of delta x, so delta x You remember it was b minus a divided by n. The same thing I used here, n is b minus a divided by delta x. So this delta x cancels with this one giving you two. And so the total error is proportional to delta x squared. So the truncation error is delta x cubed, but the total error is accurate to delta x squared. Okay, so once we have the total error, we can we can do the following. Uh, if you use the trapezoidal rule, the exact integral i will be i1 plus some constant, let's call that c1, delta x1 square. So what I've done here, this is the exact Answer. This is the answer obtained by trapezoidal rule. And this here is the error. Here that constant says so total error. Right? What this is saying is that the trapezoidal rule has an error. That error is over order of delta x square. If you take that error, total error, sum it with the trapezoidal rule formula, you should get the exact value. Okay. Now, this is true for any step size. So if you choose a different step size, the same thing is true, where x1 is one step size, x2 is another step size. We see one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to solve for C1 from these two expressions. You can see that if you do one minus two, 
you can compute C1. So 1 minus 2, so you'll have 0 equals I1 minus I2 plus C1 delta X1 square minus delta X2 square. So C1 is 2 minus I1. Okay, so once we get C1, we can compute I as I1 plus C1, so I2 minus I1 delta X1 square delta X2 square. Times delta X1 square. So simplifying this gives me just like here. Simplify to get I equals okay, this can also be written as. R square I2 minus I1 divided by R square minus 1, where R is delta X1 divided by delta X2. Uh, yeah. Okay, so choose R is equal to 2, then I equals 4I2 minus I1 divided by uh, 4 minus 1, so 3. So the reason why, so it can be shown that I is accurate to delta x raised to 4. Okay, so remember trapezoidal rule is accurate to delta x square, but by doing this calculation where we use two different i's, one at a one with uh, one, uh, two of them such that the step step lengths are related by well one is half of the other. This resulting calculation is more accurate than the preceding calculation. So what this is saying is that you could also get the same thing with Simpson's rule once, or you could use uh, trapezoidal rule twice and do this extrapolation. This thing is this formula is the is basically the Richardson um, extrapolation, which gives you more accurate approximation using a lower order method. It's by using two data points, two, two values of the integral. So it's a way of circumventing uh, using higher order rule. If you don't want to do a higher order rule, use two lower order rule twice. Compute I1, I2, and the resulting calculation is as accurate as the higher order rule. You could, so this is shown for the trapezoidal rule. You could do the same thing with the Simpson's uh, rule. And I'll just write, I'll just write it down and I think we're out of time, then we're out of time. Uh, we can do the same thing for Simpson's rule. Here I would be I1 plus C1 delta x raised to 4 because this is the total error 
is proportional to delta x4, even though the truncation error was proportional to delta x is to phi. So when you take the, the integral, you get one order lower total error. So what you'll do is you'll do the same thing for Simpsons. You'll compute C1, and then you'll see that uh, solve for C1 and assume delta x1, delta x2. is equal to R, and the formula for I would be R raised to four, I two minus I one divided by R raised to four minus one. Okay, the resulting I is accurate to delta x raised to six. So now by using Simpson's rules twice to compute I1, I2, the resulting calculation for I is accurate to delta x raised to six. So this is um, one of the methods of improving the accuracy without essentially doing uh, a more complex rule. So dx is b minus a divided by n. Okay, uh, this is I'm trying to do it with trapezoidal rule. So let's create this table. One point five seven zero eight. So this is uh, well. This is the formula: x equals a plus i dx, where i goes from zero all the way to one, two, and three. Okay, that's the formula I used. over here to compute this 0 0.52361. I just went uh, I, I equals 0, 1, 2, 3 in that formula. Now, once you have x, you can find compute cosine x using your calculator. That'll be 1. Right? So let's put that in a table. Yeah, I'm going to write the formula for trapezoidal rule. It is, uh, let's call this F0, F1, F2, F3. So we have F0 plus twice F1 plus twice F2 plus F3. And so putting in the values, you should get 0.9770. Here n is equal to six. So again, we compute dx, that's b minus a divided by n. So b is pi divided by two, n is six. Uh, this comes out to be 0 0.2618. So now I need to get the grid, which is x equals a plus i times dx, where i will go from zero one, two, three, four, five, six. That I need to stop at n. Okay, so based on that, I have x cosine x. So I need to put i, uh, I equals zero. So that will be uh, zero. Cosine of zero is one. 
next I have i equals one. Uh, so a plus dx, so zero plus i dx will be 0.2618. So cosine of this, 9659. And we can just keep doing that, 5236. 0 0.8660, 0 0.7871, 0 0.0471, 0 0.0472, 0 0.5, 1.3090, 0 0.2558, and the last value is 1.57. 0, 0.8 and cosine of that is 0. F0, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6. Okay, so now if you want to compute this using the uh, trapezoidal approximation, that's going to be dx divided by 2, f0 plus twice, f1 plus twice, f2 plus twice, f3 plus twice, f4 plus twice, f5 plus f6. Okay, so it's just a matter of taking the right uh, numbers from the table and then putting it in a calculator, 0 0.9943. Okay, so that is our solution for uh, I2 with grid size n equals 6. Okay, this is the most interesting part, the Richardson extrapolation. So what Richardson extrapolation says is that if you have estimates at uh, at two consecutive step sizes, n into n, then you can use this formula in order to compute a better approximation. The formula is r square i2 minus i1 divided by r square minus one. Here r is delta x1 divided by delta x2. Okay, so if you want, you can also put this B minus A divided by N. We had used three and then we had used six, right? For the second one. So this is approximately, uh, well, six divided by three, it's two. So R is two here, but it doesn't have to be two, right? You could also use uh, N and N plus one. It doesn't really matter. So now we have I equals, 2 square i2 minus i1 divided by 2 square minus 1. So that would be just put here 4 i2. i2 is 0 0.9943. i1 was 
this was in the previous uh, step, it was computed to be 0 0.9770 divided by four minus one. Uh, so I comes out to be 1.001. Okay, so these are the three estimates we got. We have one estimate from n equals three, which was in the previous page, I1. I2 is uh, using n equals six. Uh, I is using Richardson extrapolation. And then the last one is how do we do it analytically? So I exact is zero pi divided by two cosine x dx. The integral of cosine x is sine of x. Upper limit is pi divided by two. So we have sine which is one. So I exact is one. Okay, so you can see that this is the exact value. Look how close it is to the value obtained from Richardson extrapolation. It's off by the third decimal place. Okay. Uh, this one is slightly off. It's not way off, it's slightly off, like it's 0 0.9943 versus one. So it's about uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.006 or something off. But this is clearly better than I2 or even I1. So without doing extra calculations, you can get a better approximation. You had a question? Yeah.